Uh, good evening, gentlemen. Welcome back to the old computer shack. Let's let's talk about RC circuits today. Uh, recall, once upon a time, we were talking about getting this extra Q bus backplane working with a. PC power supply. Wait, that wire is not long enough to show on the camera. Fuck. With a PC power supply. But uh, we have to generate some timing signals to make the CPU start. Uh, the um, Once the power comes up, there is one main signal that tells it that the main power is okay, that has to have an edge a certain time, uh, at least a certain time after the power comes up, and uh, a rising edge. And then there's another one after that. Uh, that's optional, I think, that tells it that the battery power is okay, because these things have like a 5 volt battery power terminal too, because um, some of the older ones used core memory that retained its storage when the power was off, so they had to do the same thing with the, C with the MOS memory later, so that shit would still work right, so things had to have battery backups, and then they quit doing that at one, some point. But in any case, um, we have to generate a delay, and um, if we look at a power supply, let's obtain a probe. No, not that kind of probe, you naughty boy. You wished, though, didn't you? That's uh, other channels. That's on other channels. Um, not that I would know anything about that. Okay, let's let's hook a. Here's here's some leads from my variable voltage power supply and we can hook it up let's just hook it straight up to the straight up to the scope probe what could go wrong not a thing not a thing let's see trigger menu trigger on channel one yes trigger on the rising edge yes very good two volts per division Let's turn our time base down a little bit, up a little bit. Okay, what's going to happen when we turn the power on? 5 volts. Oh, it went up really fast. We'll turn it off and it goes do 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 Kind of like you do after you're done, if you know what I'm saying. Uh, but if we put it in single mode and hit it, oh, we need to squeeze that bad boy in there a little more. Let's try it like this. Off you go. All right, we capture the rising edge of the power. See this? Uh, this um, this occurs over what two, three, three, three milliseconds there. Um, but uh, the. Uh, TTL level voltage level for a one is about two volts, which is right there. So, in this area, shit's going to start acting weird, and um, we don't want the CPU to start running while the power is still unstable in this unstable region here. Um, what happens is the uh, the power comes up, and the CPU asserts asserts an init signal on the bus that resets all of the cards on the bus. And then what we need to do is generate another square wave sometime after this one. Um, well, not a square square wave, but a, a, a high transition sometime after this that'll stay high after that. Um, that will tells the CPU card to drop that init signal and start executing code. Uh, so we thought about doing that um, in a previous video with like a an AT Mega 32. Or, there may be even a couple pins on an ESP32 that we were going to use for a serial terminal or something, but um, I was encouraged to do it the old school way, so let's do it the old school way. Let's talk about RC circuits, if I can get unplugged here and get this shit out of the way. So, an RC circuit is a circuit with a resistor and a capacitor, so we will make ours something like this. We will have a resistor and we'll have a voltage output here and we'll stick a capacitor on it here and we'll tie that capacitor to ground like this and when we apply a voltage here 
all right this capacitor begins with no charge all right so it's not blocking any DC when it has no charge right so that'll pull that'll pull all of that'll that'll, that'll pull this this uh, this voltage here to zero volts at first um, as the when the, when the capacitor first begins to charge through this resistor and as the capacitor charges this voltage will slowly rise until it matches the input voltage and the rate at which that voltage rises is governed by the value of the resistor and the capacitor. The higher value capacitor, the longer it takes to charge. The higher re value resistor, the more it limits the current flowing into the capacitor, causing it to charge more slowly. So um, we can we can prototwip that on a prototwipping board, if you would like. This is a uh, I can't read I can't read uh, one percent resistor values um, in. My brain head because I'm a dumb ass. It should be, yes, that is a 10k resistor. That is the value that we wantificated. So we will stick it in there. We stick it in. And then we will stick a capacitator in there as well. And we are going to apply our input voltage from the power supply somewhere here. Whee! Um, this is the negative side of the capacitor, and we'll apply our voltage to this side of the resistator, and we'll take this channel 1 probe, and we will hook it to the input voltage, along with the ground quip. Turn around there, you turd. Like so, and then we'll take our channel 2 probe, ah, probe, and put it, um, and put it here on this on this output here like that and then we will turn our time base down a little bit that's too much let's try four milliseconds this is a this ought to be a I think this is a 100 microfarad capacitor uh, I don't want to pull it out and see let's try it and see oh, Single catching mode. Oh, we didn't have enough there. Let's redo that. Okay. Single. Alright. There you can see the um, the sharp edge as the power supply comes up and the uh, the gradual charging of that capacitor, the gradual rising of this voltage right here as the capacitor charges. And since um, a TTL logic level 1 is about 2 volts, we would assume that we, we could generate a square wave right about here, or that this could trigger the thing, but we can't, we, we have to have a nice sharp edge, a nice sharp edge on our, on our, on our waveform here that we're going to apply that power good signal with because if you zoom way in on this you can see you can see the little bittery bitty bitty uh, all the, you can see this noise see this noise that noise when it when it reaches that threshold that threshold between a one and a zero it's going to jiggle back and forth between a one and a zero there um, Due to that noise, and it's going to make a bunch of bunch of shit there, um, and that's going to fuck fuck the CPU up. So we have to we have to turn this uh, curved waveform into a nice sharp square wave. How would how will we do that? Well, we could do that with a Schmidt trigger buffer, um, and the way those work. They have a sign that I can never fucking draw. That's something like that. Yes. You know what I'm talking about. And it takes an input signal and it produces an output signal. And the way these works is, in order for the output to transition high, all right, um, the input voltage has to reach a certain potential, like say two volts. It depends on the particular device. It ought to be in the data sheets. But then for 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 this to transition back low again, the input voltage has to drop to some other 
lower voltage than that, say like 1.5 volts or so. I'm just pulling those out of my ass. I don't know what they are off the top of my head. So th this is a, th they call this input hysteresis here, right? Um, uh, so the the voltage rises until it um, surpasses the, the, the trigger voltage of the Schmidt trigger and the output goes high, all right? But then for that output to go low again, it has to come back down lower than it was when it started with. Uh, not a lot lower, but a little bit. And that filters that noise out there. The Schmidt trigger gates like that are very good for turning analog signals like this into nice crisp digital signals. And what, what might be the best gate to do that with? Well, we can do that with a good old 74 LS245 bus driver chip that is used everywhere and everything because it happens to have Schmidt trigger inputs on it. So, let's move our conglomeration over to this thing. We'll, we'll be simply adding our Schmidt trigger buffer here and measuring this point and uh, I guess we'll keep measuring the input voltage. I've got a 8 channel scope over here but I can't point the camera at it so we're stuck with the whole scam tech here uh, for the moment. So let's see here this this is going to be VCC up here so we can just stick this resistor across like that to get our input voltage and we can stick this across here to ground like that oh does this look like a fucking disaster yet pretty much and this is also high quality chinesium breadboard too so it's entirely possible that none of this will work because my breadboard is getting sproined I should have invested in proper breadboards but you know me I am cheap. So let's hook our input voltages, or supply voltages, I should say, onto the thang. And then we will measure the input of the power supply again, the same way that we were. And then we're going to have to stick a thing of some kind of thing on the output of that gate, which I think was going to be here somewheres, I think, and hook our other probe, our other proberoo up to that. Um, and I, let's see, we'll need a smaller time base. Let's go with uh, eight milliseconds. Probably ought to be on. Now. Let's see here. We ought to. Let's trigger on channel two. That'll be our that'll be our delayed wave because I want to see our trigger voltage is going to be two volts on channel two because that's a TTL level one. We'll put it on single mode and hit the thing. Okay, there we got our nice clean square wave out of the output of that shit trigger there and. Um, the voltage is a little bit lower, that's like 4 volts, uh, because that's how TTL logic works. Don't worry about it, as long as it's more than 2 volts, you're fine. Now, what I was worried about was the instability, the instability of the, uh, of the chip's output when, it's, when the power is first coming up, and you can see that, you can see that right there. But apparently it wasn't more than 2 volts, or it would have triggered back here, instead of up here, but let's, um, oops, wrong, wrong knob, let's zoom way in again, and try this, uh, oh, mm. so if we, when we zoomed way in there, oops, wrong frickin' knob again, when we zoomed way in there, we could see it, it triggered on, on that edge, that funny edge, when everything first came on, so that's unfortunate. I think that's early enough in the, um, I think that's early enough. Ah! Why do I keep doing that?
early enough as the power comes up that it's not going to make too awful much difference. Hopefully, hopefully that shit there isn't going to screw us up. It's getting late. 9.42 p.m. Shit! I have to work at farm things in the morning, so uh, we'll finish this tomorrow, but uh, tomorrow evening we will finish it, and we shall make a board on a perfa board of some kind and attach it to the back plane so that it always just magically generates this signal after the power comes up. And I think I will I will find myself oh look I've got one right here. I'll find myself some kind of uh, some kind of cable -woo, cable looter. Well, wait, this one doesn't have a 5-volt line in it. I'll find something that's got a 5-volt line in it, 12-volt line in it, and cut the end off and have something with a Molex connector that we can uh, we can attach to the back plane to power it off of just a, just a, you know, you, you know what I'm saying, a regular, like, PC-style um, Molex connector. We can uh, power the back plane with that off the PC power supply instead of farting around with a big old ATX connector. Okay, that's the magic of RC circuits. Uh, keep in mind that I am just a dumb hick in a shack with some old computers. I was a software engineer by trade before I uh, returned to the family business. Uh, um, so all of my hardware bullshittery is entirely self-taught, and that, of course, means that I am really stupid about some things, so anything that I've said here may be bullshit. Go get a second opinion before you design your magnum opus project based on the crap that I say. Okay, that's all. Goodbye. Until tomorrow.